What's good YouTube, your boy Proxy here, and today we're going to be talking about optimizing your punishes. First and foremost, each character has different options when it comes to punishing. Some get meterless launchers, others have to constantly spend a bar, etc. So first, let's talk about the general properties of punishing buttons or strings that you need to understand. First, we have startup frame. We know a punishing button must be less than the frames on block of a string, special, etc. to punish it. Secondly, each button has its own unique reach. Some buttons have very good reach, whilst others are very stubby in nature. This is a very important property to note, especially against strings or buttons or specials with pushback or far landing distances. Third, we have launching capability. Some buttons or strings afford you the ability to launch your opponent without meter. We call these meterless launchers. Some examples are Lukang's back 2 3, Raiden standing 3 4, Lime's back 2 4, etc. Sub Zero's back 2 is a very peculiar case. Technically, it is a meterless launcher, but this launcher has a 25 frame startup. You will almost never be able to punish your opponent with it unless they use a special that is very negative. To give you perspective, Lime does not have a single special that is punishable on block by Sub's back 2. Fourth, we have the forward advancing property. These strings are very good as their motion covers significant distance. Sub Zero's forward 1, Raiden's forward 2, Kitana's back 2, Havik's back 2 are all good examples of forward advancing strings. These strings can afford you easier punishes against specials, strings, etc., with significant pushback or landing distances. For example, I can punish Shang Tsung's down one into spikes easier with forward 2 rather than dash cancelling into another string. These strings may also complement certain fighters back dash mind game because they all hit mid. For example, a fundamental part of Kitana's game plan is a back dash mind game. Back 2 can allow her to outspace her opponent's pokes or various buttons, allowing her to full combo punish them. I'll talk more about back dashing in its own separate video. Last, we have damage capability. Every punishing button offers you different damage potential. Faster buttons generally offer you lower damage potential, while slower buttons offer you higher damage potential. Also, something to note, you need to know where you can special cancel in your various strings. Not every ender allows you to special cancel into a cameo or special. For example, with standing 2421, even though the one ends in a knockdown, I can special cancel from it as it's two hits. No. With forward 434, I cannot special cancel from the 4 and it knocks down the opponent. That doesn't mean I can't combo from it though. Here's me using Movado to combo off it. Context matters. You'll get tired of me saying it. Okay, so we talked about the various properties you need to know. Now let's talk about what you should consider when choosing your optimal punishment given an opportunity by the opponent. You all play different characters and you should know your optimal punish rules for each of your punishing starters. Your standing 1 round may be 33%, whilst your forward 2 round may be 37%, or your back 2 round may be 35% meterless. You'll do a process of elimination when choosing your punishing button based on various factors. I'll showcase various moves on block to illustrate my points. First, we'll use Raiden's 2421 which is negative 16 on block. First factor to consider is the punishable moves frames on block. This is the basis from which you'll choose your punishing button. Since it is negative 16, you can choose your punishing button ranging from a 6 to 15 frame startup. Second factor is to know your available resources. Some punishes may or may not be available to you based on your bars of super meter or your cameo gauge. Third factor to consider is the pushback or landing distance of the punishable move. Does it have pushback? And if it does, can my chosen button punish it by dash cancelling or due to its forward advancing properties? This specific string does not have pushback, so this factor is not considered. Fourth factor to consider is the damage output. Out of all my punishing buttons that can punish this move, what is my most damaging option? Here, you gauge all your options and choose the most damaging punish route. So I'm in reading, and I understand my character's punishing options thoroughly. I'm a fiend for efficiency. So if I was to punish this, I would use my standing 3-4 that has a 12 frame startup that grants me 417 damage for 1 bar. I'll show you my 3 other options. Standing 1-2 affords me 298 damage 1 bar. Standing 2-4-2-1 affords me 354 damage 1 bar. And last, forward 4-3 affords me 327 damage 1 bar. Here's some additional nuance to choosing standing 3-4. Look at the corner carry that this combo road gives me. 
Additionally, it is also my meterless launcher. I do not need to spend bar to launch my opponent with this road. Even if I don't burn the bar, it all damages all my other options. Meterless launchers are very, very good options for a character to have, especially if they don't possess slow starter frames and can punish a variety of moves on block. Unless you want to cash out on damage, you should often use your meterless launcher, if you have one, as it allows you to save meter for other uses. Resource management is also another video I'll drop, because I tend to see people burn through resources without understanding how and why to use them. Now, let's use another example, Rain's negative 16 special. Here, I know I have three options, my standing 1-2 and my standing 2-4-2-1, and standing 3-4 that has the start of frames to punish it. I also know that I have resources, so we move into the third factor, does the move have pushback? Yes, and it's quite significant too. So we test. I know I have to dash cancel to punish this special, but which buttons can afford me a punish? Standing 1 works, standing 2 works, and standing 3. Uh, works? Here's another underrated factor to consider when punishing an opponent. Consistency. Even though I can punish Rain with standing 3, it is very inconsistent. Therefore, I would forego, as I actually do, using this specific punish against this special. Now, I'm left with standing 1 and standing 2, and I know standing 1-2 is 298 damage, and standing 2-4-2-1 is 354. Therefore, I know that standing 2-4-2-1 is my optimal route. Here's another example. I can flawless block the last hit of Sindel's forward 1 string and dash cancel to Punisher. Standing 1 and standing 2 can both fulfill that purpose. However, standing 1 has much better reach than the stubby standing 2. If I try to punish Cinder with standing 2, it is not consistent as the window is very tight and I may mess up my timing or movement. On the other hand, standing 1 is very consistent at punishing her even though I get significantly less damage. Sometimes, you have to forego damage for consistency when it comes to punishing. At higher levels of play, you won't be given as many punish opportunities, so you have to take advantage of them when they present themselves. Doing at least some damage to an enemy is better than missing a punish entirely. It also varies based on character. Here Shao Kahn using his standing 2 and Scorpion using his standing 2-1 to punish the same string. They both can cancel their dash earlier because both those buttons have significant reach. See how easy it is for them to do so as both their buttons have greater reach than Raiden's options? This also applies to using punishing buttons that are very close to the frames on block or the move on block. For example, Liu Kang's wake up is 15 frames and I would use standing 3-4 to punish it but I would often miss my punish. So, in favor of consistency, I swapped my optimal punish to my 8 frame standing 2-4-2-1. The closer a punishing button start a frame is to the frames of the move being punished, the more strict your punishing window is, and vice versa. Consistency plays a large factor in determining an optimal punish. Even though I didn't talk about cameos, y'all should be able to understand how they correlate. Some cameos allow you to launch your opponent without using your own meter. Me personally, I consider these meterless launchers, as meter often refers to the fighter's super meter. Certain punish routes also allow you to incorporate your cameo for more damage. For example, even though I can punish this with standing 3-4, I can also use standing 2-4-2 two, two in the glaive and get more damage. Once you get comfortable with your fighter cameo combination, this will become second nature to you. Here's the last example. Here's Shang Tsung poke into spikes. He creates significant space due to his landing distance. This leaves him at negative 28 frames. I have 6 punishes I can use here, standing 1, standing 2, standing 3, forward 4, forward 2, or forward 3. They all meet the frame requirement. We know the special cancel has significant pushback, so we check what can consistently reach him. Standing 1, standing 2, standing 3, and forward 4 cannot punish it due to their stubbiness. There's 2 options left, forward 4 and forward 3. Now let's check consistency. Both are forward advancing and both are basically the same consistency, so we then check the damage potential. For a 3 affords me 397 damage, whilst for a 2 affords me 328 damage. So, in conclusion, for a 3 is my optimum punish for this specific situation. But, that can change based on cameos. Let me show you an example. If I have Chameleon, this affords me to use a glaive if I have a Jade disguise. 
This now grants me a better corner carrying combo and 409 damage. Like I said, you get tired of hearing me saying it, context matters. I know I'm making it seem a bit tedious, but it's much easier to do this once you understand your punishing buttons. It'll become second nature to you as you become more comfortable with your fighter and their cameo counterpart. When it comes to punishing, or ducking, anti-airing etc, I'll cover those in other videos. So that's all from me. Hope this video provided some value to you and if it did, consider subscribing to the channel for more content to come. I'm out, one love.